Today we're talking about the DJI Osmo Action and how you can make video like this. Can you see me? Probably not because this shot is overexposed. Look like this. So this is your sample on the DJI Osmo Action. We're talking ND filters, how to use them with the DJI Osmo Action and how to get better looking cinematic video. The DJI Osmo Action has been out for a few years now, and it's competed with a GoPro Hero 7, 8, and it still competes with the Hero 9 in many ways. Like the GoPro, the Osmo Action has an f2.8 fixed aperture, so what that means is it's meant for shooting in brighter conditions to get the best shots. In really bright light, our eyes can adjust with our iris or the lens opening of our eyes, but we can see better if we filter bright light with sunglasses. In photography and film, ND filters act like sunglasses for your camera. They filter excess light hitting your camera sensor so you can get better exposure. So I'm gonna give you some basic guidelines for using ND filters if you shoot on automatic mode. And I'll also give you a quick guide on how to shoot even better video using cinematic guidelines with ND filters. And I'll also share with you some of the ND filters I've used with the Osmo Action. As always, links to the items I use in this video along with some great accessories for the DJI Osmo Action are in the description below. So let's talk about how to shoot on automatic and which ND filters to use. Now these guidelines are pretty much guidelines you get when you buy ND filters and they're a great starting point for shooting on automatic with a DJI Osmo Action. Now most ND filter kits you get four filters. They come with ND4, 8, 16, and 32. Now the numbers represent f-stops, the levels of light that are filtered. So the highest number is like the highest f-stop you can achieve with a multiple of 32 f-stops. Simply put, the higher the number, the darker the filter. So here are some of the simple guidelines for using ND filters if you're shooting on automatic. And I put these guidelines in the description below. So by the way, while you're down there, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and let me know you found them. So here they are. Use ND4 for a cloudy overcast day. ND8 for a partly cloudy day with some sun peeking through the clouds. ND16 for a partly cloudy day with lots of breaks in between clouds with more sun. And finally, ND32 for a really bright sunny day. Now, some filter kits come with an ND64, and this works on an extremely sunny day where the area you're shooting with has bright reflective light, like from a beach, street, or pavement. Now these are simple guidelines for using ND filters while shooting on automatic. Let's move on and get a little more advanced with ND filters. So if you're familiar with the settings on the Osmo Action, let's talk about cinematic video. You always hear cinematic video being thrown around. And if you're like me, you might think, what? Shooting cinematic can mean a whole lot of things, especially if you've taken the time to study it. It can involve coordinating sound, your images, color grading, and a whole lot more. But for consumers like you and me, a consumer camera like the Osmo Action, you can shoot smoother, more natural looking video with natural looking motion. And that's the principle of shooting video that applies to people like you and me. Here's an example. If you look at this sample video, when you look at me as I wave, you can actually see it's really sharp, crispy, and you don't really see a blur. If we were to stop each frame of video, you wouldn't actually see a little blur because each frame is being recorded at a really high shutter speed. In order to make this more cinematic or natural looking like we see with our eyes, there needs to be a little bit of blur in your video. So here's what you need to do to get that. Follow this formula. Set your frame rate and then set your shutter speed to double of your frame rate. This formula is a cinematic principle which goes back to shooting with mechanical film cameras where fra film frames and the shutter angle, in our case shutter speed, would have to use the same formula to shoot good looking cinematic film. So for us, if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, meaning 30 frames are being shot each second, then your shutter speed would be 1 60th of a second. For 24 frames per second, your shutter speed would be 1 50th of a second. Now if you want to slow things down and do that cinematic slow motion stuff, you can shoot at 60 frames per second, but your shutter speed in order to get that nice blur would be 1 1 20th a second, so it looks really natural when you slow it down in your editing software. So when you look at this sample for the DJI Osmo Action when I'm waving, you can see it's a little more natural looking like what you would see with your eyes. 
So now, let's see how to set this on your DJI Osmo Action. Here's how to set your frame rate. In video mode, swipe up. The bottom line is your frame rate, so slide it to where you want it. In our case, we're going to shoot at 30 frames per second, so slide the bottom line until it reaches 30 FPS. Now swipe up from the top to go back to the main screen. Now to set your shutter speed, you have to be in manual mode, so from this screen, swipe from the right to the left. You'll see if you're on automatic mode, auto is highlighted, and some settings are grayed out. So tap on the M to enable manual mode. When you do that, you can see you can actually set your ISO and your shutter speed. Now on the bottom right corner, tap on shutter. Move the dial on the left to 1 60th, which is double the frame rate we selected. Tap on the area of the screen without menus to go back to shooting on the view screen. And now you're set. Now once you have those settings dialed in for cinematic video, here's what you might find. Your video looks overexposed like this. So I have cinematic settings dialed in. I'm shooting at 30 frames per second at 1 1 60th of a shutter speed. And then the ISO is dialed in at 100, which is the base ISO for this camera. And so this is what it looks like without an ND filter. And this is where ND filters come in. They help to filter light so you can slow down your shutter speed and balance your frame rate so your video looks better with natural looking motion blur. So this is your sample on the DJI Osmo Action. I'm filming at 100 ISO and then 30 frames per second at a shutter speed of 1 1 60th using the cinematic principles and the base ISO which is the optimum ISO for this camera which is 100. And here's what motion looks like. As I pass my hand through the camera and its range of view, you can see that motion has a little bit more of a blur. And that's what you would see if you're, say, filming like kids or a sporting event. You'd see a little more smoother blur um, in your action by using cinematic principles and the ND filters on a bright day like today. What you'll also find when you film for natural motion blur, especially if you watch your video on a larger screen, your eyes won't get so tired when you're watching some action that you filmed. Once I went to a sports restaurant with huge TV screens and some in our party got really dizzy and wanted to sit further away from the screens. After a while, as I looked close, I noticed it was because most of the games were filmed at such high frame rates, they didn't have motion blur. And the movement on the big screen was not smooth, it was jittery, like looking at someone at a nightclub with the strobe lights on. So if that's been your experience, let me know in the comments below. ND filters are great. They work well for getting great looking videos with the DJI Osmo Action. Now there are several brands I've linked in the comments below, so check them out. The first two from Freewell and Polar Pro are those that I used to get some of the samples in this video. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video. In the meantime, check out this video right here.